So if you're a fan of the channel, you might know that I've used Amoretti products on a regular basis. Today, I am doing a long-term test to see how one of their flavorings has stood the test of time. Let's get started. So in today's video, I am, like I just said, testing the time or the adaptation of a flavoring from Amaretti. So right here, I have a grape mead. Now, you notice it doesn't look very purple. And that's because I basically made a traditional mead and then added grape flavoring from Amaretti. Now, I'm a big fan of them because they are able to help you achieve lots of flavors you might not be able to do. Obviously, grape's a little easier because you just use grape juice, generally speaking. So I don't really know how this one is gonna be. I remember tasting it post-primary, post-bottling, and it was pretty accurate to what grape flavor is. We are now 15, is that right? No, we are now 16 months later since the, the beginning of this mead. So our tasting might be a little bit different. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, and then we're gonna go ahead and taste it. I used the following recipe. One gallon of spring water, 2.2 pounds of alpha alpha blossom honey, two grams of Lauvin D47, and 1.6 ounces of Amaretti grape flavoring. I didn't do any back sweetening. The starting gravity on this was 1070 and it fermented out. So that's like nine-ish percent, I think. So that's about what we have right here. And I'll take a picture of the label. I think I actually didn't give the correct information because I said 10% on here, but anyways. Um, now, let's go and pour it. That was the recipe. It is still, so obviously I didn't do any uh, back sweetening, so I don't think I stabilized it. It just kind of halted at zero. All right, here we go. It doesn't smell too grapey. It does have a hint of grape. It's got a, um, it's definitely got still, still has some booziness to it. Man, the floral side of this is very is uh, different than the alpha alpha I'm used to. It's got it's like more rich. It's more dark. Alpha alpha to me is normally brighter. Interesting. Not a lot of grape on the nose. I'll tell you that. This was a one gallon batch, by the way. So 1.6 ounces of the flavoring, I think, was about enough for one gallon according to their standards. Interesting. Whoa, man, that flavor development. It was like this, a little rocky. Um. You get grape on the beginning of the taste. Like the, the very first thing you get is, is grape. But then it kind of fades away real fast. You get hit with a pretty warm honey character, a little bit of sweetness, even though it's dry, or was dry, and uh, still a little bit of booziness to it. Yeah, the grape flavor is not super strong here. I do wonder if I just didn't use enough in the first place. It's not bad, it just doesn't have a lot of when I think grape mead, I think in your face, grape character, this doesn't necessarily have that. Hmm. It's not like super popping is what I mean. The more you drink it, of course, that the grape fl uh, flavor is kind of filling out more and more. And I think that's because it gets it's in your face over time. It's, it's compounding. Whereas uh, I feel like you should, at the beginning of a drink, whether it's the first sip or the last sip, 20 minutes later, you should try to get that flavoring through the whole thing. I will say that like the grape character itself is still grape E. The problem I have with this right now is that it is not grape E enough. And I don't think that's a flavoring problem. I think that's a, a quantity of flavoring. Um, my little 1.6 ounces, I don't believe was exactly enough. Um, my experience with the Amoretti flaving, uh, Amoretti side of things has been that some of them are more powerful than the others. So on their little eight ounce containers, they, they generally say that eight ounces could cover five gallons or flavor five gallons. And I've found that that's not always true. So in this case, this grape one, I feel like it probably needed more and needed probably three to four ounces to really achieve that grape flavor that you want. I mean, it's very smooth and I, I personally kind of do like it. It's just representing grape. I didn't put enough grape into this. I do think the flavor has held up time, meaning that there hasn't been like a diffusion of flavor or it hasn't altered or gotten warped by 
time. I think that was one of my worries, and I think a lot of worries for people with these flavorings is that you are going to lose the flavor as it ages, or you are going to possibly have it not be as grape-esque or whatever else you're using. It's not, it's not bad. It's definitely got an interesting body. I do think that the flavoring adds a little bit of body, but this being a 9%, what did I say, 16 months old, we're, we're, we've got some age to it. And that definitely helps heal some wounds. So my, uh, well, what I did with this was I actually took, and I believe I, I added the flavoring out of the primary. So I didn't add the flavoring in from the beginning. I could be wrong there. I'll roll some video of this because I do have a video, original video, which will be down in the description. Um, as far as like how long-term these things age, and I'll give you an example. Hey, it just so happens that I have the grape flavoring right here, <laughs> unintentionally. So this is the stuff I use. This is Amaretti grape flavoring for this. And it is an eight ounce, well, it's eight ounce total weight. 5.454 fluid ounces. So this says on the back of it, about seven to 14 ounces by weight per 10 gallons. I used 1.6 for a one gallon, and it wasn't it wasn't quite to the, the flavoring or level that I want. Again, that I would not fault that as their fault. I would say that, well, I would say that those numbers are not correct on the back. Um, at least across the board, they're not correct. Maybe for some of these, uh, flavorings, but anyways, well, I do find it interesting. This is the grape flavoring I used and I mean obviously it's dark That's that's the color of it and this is the color of the mead. So I didn't put enough of it in there Just for giggles. I am going to add a little bit of the flavoring into here this grape flavoring in here so we can See what it tastes like with more flavoring I'm gonna add a little more I'm gonna go overboard with it a little bit, but Again, this, that much I added right there was not was not improving it to be extremely great. Okay, I don't know how much I've added, but I've added enough to bolster the flavor. Okay, that's definitely more grapey. It helps, and it is grape, but I do think there is a prime advantage to using either grape juice or actual grapes or something like that, and that would be, I believe there's more tannic value to be had with grapes specifically. I think I'm gonna add another element to this video. Okay, we've decided the grape is not, not extremely strong as it was when I added more, it gave some flavoring. Let's see now, we're also gonna do this. We're gonna look at this elderberry mead. Same situation, this was made with elderberry flavoring from Amaretti, added into the secondary. So this was water, mesquite honey, don't know how much elderberry flavoring, and yeast. This is from November 2019, so we're even older. Oh gosh, we're 19 months, eight, 20 months, a year and a half, over a year and a half. Anyways, math. We're gonna go ahead and open this up. We got a little carbonation with this sucker. I don't believe I was intending to carbonate it, so cheers to that. Oh, it might have been just been degassing. Okay, woo, very different. This one, I'm ready, the, I'm ready. the elderberry is like in your face. Oh, this one smells really good though. Comparing the two, the grape one is not as pleasant as the, the tortilla one is not as pleasant as this one. It's It's got a um, earthiness, it's got a berry, it's got a dirtiness to it. Woo, I like this one. Okay, um, again, same idea, elderberry flavoring. I'll throw a picture of this, this stuff on the screen. I think there's a video of this one as well. I see how this one has held up the time of over a year and a half. Ooh, okay, yeah, there's that. It's, it's degassing or carbon had some slight carbonation cut. So I'm getting some bubbles that I did not expect. It dried out, which is a little tough because I feel like part of the flavor comes from the sweetness you get from the fruit. So when you dry something out, you can sometimes lose that character. Like if you take a sizer and you ferment it out from 1050 to 10 to 1.000, completely dry and don't back sweeten, the apple character is gonna have a way different feel and taste than with a little sweetness. So I'm getting, I feel like I'm missing a little sweetness here. I do feel like the flavoring though has retained its its true form. I think this one did also retain the, retain, retain ugh, the grape 
flavoring. The same uh, thing for this elderberry. It, it has retained it, but it needs some sweetness. I do feel like I get the dirty, not dirty. I feel like I do get the um, dark berry. The I, I think of like a dirty blueberry when I think of elderberry. Not everybody is on that world, so please don't assume that's what a elderberry tastes like, but it's got a different taste than a blueberry. I feel like that's pretty accurate though. With some sweetness, I, I think it would actually present itself well. So I have two examples here of Amaretti flavorings. And I promise you, I know some of you have seen stuff on the channel, they're not paying me to do these things. I did this by, by my own volition. And I really wanna highlight this. Not everybody, including myself in the world, has access to things easily. For example, elderberry. Well, I don't have the flavoring, elderberry. I don't have access to elderberries in an easy fashion. Now, do they make purees? Do they make other ways to get it? Yes, but if I ever wanna make an elderberry mead, I'm probably gonna to have to do something that's a little bit different. So using a flavoring, which is, these things are from um, extracts generally, they're like true elderberries, condensed, concentrated. They are an easy way for me to achieve this. If you are making stuff at home and you see a, f a flavor, you see a combination of things that you wanna do that you can't do because of a limitation of ingredients, maybe check them out. Uh, if you wanna do something that's a little outrageous that you really can't recreate, let's say um, I, I spent a bunch of time trying to make a maple praline mead and it turned out to be easier just to use the flavoring from Amaretti. So, I say this not to try and push you to ever change from using fruits or using um, juices or purees. I'm saying this to give you options for the future. I believe that these have retained their flavor and character with time. Now, I don't have data to say that four years down the line, this thing is gonna taste the exact same, that great flavor is gonna taste the same or, or develop more, but I do have data to say that a year and five months, a year and to year and a half has been uh, promising for this. So uh, if you've been hesitant to use them, maybe check them out. If you don't wanna use them at all, don't use them. I mean, the, the truth is you make me the way you want to do it. If you never wanna touch uh, uh, something like this, fine. If you never wanna touch a sorbet or a metabisulfite, that's great too. Do whatever you wanna do. Brew in your own way. Just make sure you are doing the stuff you want to do. So, this has been a kind of silly test, but I do, and I did, want to um, kind of give an update for time. Because I know some people have seen me make these, but they haven't seen the long term. I have a couple bottles left somewhere around here of some things. So maybe I'll wait another year and a half or so and we'll pull stuff out and do like a three year test on a few of these meads. But this has been fun. I hope you've enjoyed. Make sure you do all the stuff down below and uh, I will catch you in a future video. Cheers.